All right, we is we ready? Live from Atlanta, Georgia, you're watching New Jack Thriller City. And today on my show is the man with the plan, man, the guy who, you know what I'm saying, gave me the opportunity to make this thing happen. You know, this is my player partner, my friend. I know him a long time. And, um, you know, I, I can't say how proud I am of this guy, man. He done took this game to a whole nother level. There's people that come in here and they know how to do comedy and everything. But when you come in and innovate, and, and, and uh, change just the whole trajectory on how it, it's being distributed. You know, that's when you're doing something. You know, he's a comedian, comedian, you know, a, a living legend, ghetto legend, urban legend. Y'all give it up for Carlos Miller. Thank you, Jack. Thank hey, you bruh, for having me here. It, it, dog, let me tell you something, man. You. Sway, Nick Cannon, y'all know how to bring people in. I'm trying to catch up right now. You mm. know, I hope I did you justice. You did. Dig, dig, you, dig, you did man. Did your thing, Jack. I'm proud of you. Hey, dog. Let's let's start from let's let's talk about this 85 South thing because this is something that I, I I don't know the backstory on it. Why is the uh, podcast called 85 South? Hey, man, because we running through the city. That's what 85 South do, man. We're running straight through the city, man. Just as simple Every as that. city. Yeah, man. You know, it's just, it's a representation of, you know, mm. where we're trying to be. Right through in the middle of the, the heart of the city, baby. Hey, man, J-Bo had, uh, uh, every time I talk to him, he always say, man, how Carlos them going, you know what I'm saying, have a show called 85 South and never had a Young Bloods on 85 Bro, South? I've been trying to get the Young Bloods on the show for the longest. I didn't hit everybody on Instagram. Get the fuck out of here. Man, set it up, Jack. Man, it sounds like a plan, man. That's what you- It was just as your... easy as that? Yeah. Just as simple yeah, as that. I, I, I bought all Young Blood's album. Come on, man. You couldn't tell me I wasn't in the Attic Crew, man. You, you been a drinking partner. Come on, man. You way. Come on, now. They had some cuts on there. Come on, man. And man, who could the Young Blood's verse? Who would you rather like to see them verse? Young Bloods versus uh, uh, shit. I don't know who to throw them in there with, Jack. I don't know who I could throw them in there with. That's a hard one to pick, man. I say Young Bloods, Field Mob. Maybe that that might could work. That might could work. Two on two. That might could work. That might could work, Jack. Did uh, Georgia Legends? Yeah. They yeah, got I'm hits. Not, I'm not. They, they got hits. Yeah, they they. I think they got the same amount of hits and whatnot. And they got like probably about right in the same amount of features too. And one hundred percent. I think it set it up. We need to set that. You up a connected, right Jack. You the plug. Hey, dog. I, I I did it by accident. You know, I um Muhammad Ali says, you know, uh, service on earth is the, the rent that we pay to be here. Oh man, I didn't know he said that. Yeah, he said that. Yeah, he said That's that, crazy. man. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, when you, when you, uh, Dwayne said this earlier, Dwayne Boyd, he came through and uh, he was just like, you know, um, giving is one of the biggest things that helped him even be able to, you know, find the happiness that he has right now. Right. You know, because he had a 50th uh, birthday party this year that was blowed out. It had to be like 1,500 people. And he wasn't even expecting that to be there to the point where I ain't want to throw a birthday party because I was like, damn, this nigga. He didn't take it to a whole nother level. This is this shit. This is a real reflection on what he's done in his life. Right. But the, you've always been the person that can connect people, though. Dig, dig, you know, dig. You have a hell of a network, and that's an asset in this business. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm I'm learning how to you know what I'm saying use that right, and this time around capitalize off that that whole situation. I guess if you think about it. And I, I guess I ain't never think about it like this. It's almost like being a, a sports agent or some shit. You think so? Uh, well, yeah, it's like being an agent, connecting the dots. Connecting the dots, yeah. Connecting but the dots. But you do it authentically, and you don't want, you don't look to gain anything nah, from it, and no. it, it just comes across. Yeah. You put me in contact with a lot of people. Do that make me a damn years. fool? No, a it lot of some would say that well, I'm no, a damn fool. Just like you said, that's that's your that's your talent, that's your gift, right? And that's how you. That's how you give back to people is that you put you put people together that normally wouldn't wouldn't have got together. One hundred percent. Yeah. So and it's just like you don't just know people. You have real relationships with people. Everybody don't know 
how to come in contact with somebody and develop a friendship you, to the point where it's like, man, whatever you need. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You have that gift, though. I mean, now, what, what, what's a, what, what would you say is your gift? Um, The vision. Sometimes I'll, I feel like sometimes I take myself out the situation too much. So I, because I'm always like visualizing and seeing how it goes. I'm a dreamer. That's my gift. Now putting together a show like 85 South, man, I done watched it like uh, plenty of times in person and I done seen it online and whatnot. And just the, the way you, fa you facilitate this show, when you first started it off, what was the mission? What was the overall mission? Bro, literally, Brian to tell you, he was there for like the first couple of episodes. Like, that's how I came up with the, this podcast is for. Because literally nobody knew what the podcast was. So we didn't ever had no format to follow and we just made it our own. And we, it's, it's literally that. It's literally that, man. It's just putting it together, getting in a room, just getting to hear comedians have conversations talk about things that you wouldn't get to hear us necessarily say on stage. You get what I'm saying? Mm. It's like the com the comedy game that I came into, comedians would always be in the back riffing or talking shit outside. It's like wherever the comedians are, that's where the most fun is. Mm. So people who are already fans of comedy, I wanted them to get to see that part. You get what I'm saying? The 100%. Just comedians being comedians. Whereas, like, we all understand that we're not doing bits right now. That we're not doing jokes right now. This is us. Like, our personalities are way doper than any show you could watch. Mm. And that's what makes us comedians. Mm. So just to get to see that raw element, I think, is what draws people in. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fry some chicken. All them claps. No, nah, this chicken frame. Did, did. Now, when you was putting together the squad, the squad that you got right now, was that the original squad of uh, 85 South, or did you have to, you know what I'm saying, try some things out? No, it's not necessarily just trying some things out. It's just about who can keep the flow going. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I see what you're saying. Who can keep the flow going? What yeah. elements makes this work? Right. It's like, how good can we get? Mm. Anybody who's ever been a part of a, a troupe or an improv troupe or a group of any sort that you know it's hard to find chemistry amongst talent. 100%. Because some talent is not group type of talent. Mm -hmm. Some talent is individual talent. Solo talent. It's David Ruffin all day. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's James Brown. It's, some people have to be standalone talent. Mm. Everybody doesn't understand the element of improv comedy or, or, or true comedy mm. where like three stooges, mm. you know, like the comedy is in how you react to what's going on. Who mm. can keep the, who can keep the stick going? That's it. So, but when it came time to do that, like it was started off with just me and DC and then like it started off with me in DC because Chico, he wasn't, he wasn't in town. Had I'm thinking you know, like, had he been here, he probably would have been there too. You get what I'm saying? But like Clayton, he was there for a little bit. Then he moved to LA. You get what I'm saying? So he was like, you know, that's you know, me and Clayton started comedy together. So anything that I'll ever be doing, he'll always be a part of it. So be at Mood to LA like right after that. And we just kept it like that. And we started building up our studio audience and took it on to a live show. And then we did get the um, opportunity to be on tour together, me, DC and Chico, while we were doing the Wild and Out tour. And it is just like, we were already cool. And then that, that really just brought us closer. You get what I'm saying? So that was always the foundation of like the live show element. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that. Now you, now, you real heavy on this independent thing right now in this particular moment. Like, when, what was the point where you just stopped wanting a deal? Or is it, am I um, putting my foot in my mouth and do you still want a deal? I still want a deal. But it's just like, you know how many times people have tried to, in so many words, try to tell me that I wasn't good enough as an entertainer? I can't believe that. But you get what I'm, it's not like they're just like, no, we don't like you, but it's like, 
it was certain elements of we don't. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Unpredictable. They got little key words that they say yeah. that just lets you know that you're just not attractive to them in the business sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I took all the opportunities of things that I've been wanting to do that I hadn't got the chance to do on the deal side or the mainstream industry side, like the voices and the voiceovers and cartoons and freestyling. And these are elements that I know are in my wheelhouse as an entertainer. So I just needed my own platform to be able to utilize all these things that they never that they don't even know that I know how to do mm. or things that I don't know, like all of this shit. Mm. It's, it's pretty much just to prove, not necessarily to prove anything, because it's not like nobody said something to me that just inspired me to prove to them, but it's just to show the world mm. and the people that I don't have to wait on the opportunities that I want. Mm. Uh, I got a chance. I, I got up one day um, back in 09, and I said, I'm going to leave and go to New York. I, at like, what, 27 years old. You, how old was you when you got up and said, I'm, I'm leaving Mississippi? 22. And I'm going to let, you were 22 years old. Yeah. What was the breaking point and what was the plan? Well, what, what, what was the plan? And what it wasn't was necessarily a breaking point. All right, so check this out. Years before I even knew I was going to do comedy, I knew I was going to do comedy. Remember, like, when I met you at those coming to the stage auditions? Yes. I had never been on stage. I was I was thinking in my mind that I could literally be coming to the stage. You get what I'm saying? Get the fuck out of here. No. When I drove down to Atlanta, I drove by myself. I drove my mom's car to Atlanta to those auditions. I didn't book no hotel room or no shit like this. I was staying with my family. And I literally, it just so worked out that like they stopped doing the auditions at like a certain number. And it was like a couple numbers before my number. But the people that I met doing that, that is like you and K-Dub and Dirty South and I think Double D might have been out there. It was a gang of comedians out yeah. there. I know I met like Billy Sorrells was out there because yeah. he was still doing like sketches on like VHS tapes or some shit. Right, right. It was a gang of comedians that I met out there. Um. And that just like, just being around, like that was the first time I really felt like I was around my peers, if that makes sense. No, no, that makes a lot like, of sense. I had felt like I was always a comedian, but I never said that. So just to be around comedians, I was like, oh shit, this is, this is the group of people. These are the people I'm supposed to know. So that was like years, maybe two or three years before I had even touched a stage. Amazing. Yeah. And it, like, even before I started doing improv comedy, because I did improv first, right? People used to call me to just come to parties and be like, man, come talk shit. Come turn this bitch up. Like, anytime they had parties, at, like, they would always call me. I would win, like, freestyle battles and shit. Just showing up at work. Like, I showed up and won a rap battle in my work uniform one time. Shit like that for real. Like people can actually vouch for these stories, man. So I always had the passion to be an entertainer. Mm. So I had, I say maybe like from like 20 to maybe 22 is when I really was just like, I just had the urge to just do that shit. Like mm. be an entertainer, be a comedian. So when I got, maybe like when I was like 21 or so, I started doing improv and in between the improv I would just like warm the crowd up, keep them interested in the in the game. And then one night, like the owner of the club, he was like, man, you should just do your own show. I'll just give you the club. You can pack it out and you can just do your thing. And I did that a couple times. It made all I, like they gave me all the money, sold the club out, and you know what I'm saying, kept all the bread. So I was like making money doing comedy before I was officially a comedian. And then when I moved to it, because it was only so many times I could do that in a small town, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I had got a job as a firefighter and I had stopped doing this shit for like almost a year. So I was like, they had, once we had like a shift change, I wasn't able to do the improv shit no more. And that shit like was devastating. 
So shit happened with the fire academy. They oh, threw me did out. Did you make it to become a firefighter? I was a firefighter. Hey, oh, I, I, check this out. Not to interrupt you. All right. But I just got finished finishing this series called Station 19. Okay. And it's about, uh, of course, firefighters. Right. And But the shit I that would, goes on in the fire station? Yeah. Oh, but man, I, I heard so many stories, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it, bro. Like, man, it was this one dude. He ain't never talked to nobody. I was like, why don't never talk to nobody? And then I found out, like, back in the day, somebody, like, slept with his wife or something, like, at the fire station. <laughs> that was on the show, too? Yeah. That should be happening. Yeah. Like, they had a crackdown. Like, the firefighters was too freaking, man. They was wife swapping. Because you're locked in there. They was having women stay up there with them and yeah. shit. They was doing the most. But it was just, like, that job really showed you how different shit is, bro. You, like, you actually get to see people wife do wife shit. Like, motherfuckers' wife come up there and bring them a whole meal and shit, and then all the dudes who don't have a wife just be like, man, your wife sure can't cook. <laughs> it was cold, bro. I was so young, and it was just like, I wasn't serious enough about that shit. And then we went, you know, we would go out to calls, like nothing major, but then I'm like, man, this shit is dangerous. I was, that's where I'm getting at. Right, but outside of that part, like ninety percent of that job in a small thing, we don't be doing shit up there. That's because it ain't no. Eating, I got you. I checking got you. out equipment, answering calls. Yeah, you go to a lot more car accidents because the fire department have to go to every car accident. Damn near, get so many fucking calls. Hey, but all they, the dudes who've been there for a long time, they go to bed early as fuck, bro. They be in the bed about yeah. six thirty, just yeah, trying to get to the morning, get that shift over with. Cause yeah. Once you get to a certain level, you really don't have to do shit no more. You mm -hmm. just show up, tell everybody what to do. Yeah, Lieutenant That was the part that I ain't like, because there was a bunch of old motherfuckers that I wouldn't, old white motherfuckers that I would never respect outside trying to tell me what to do. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not listening to you. And they go tell, tell another motherfucker who could tell the motherfucker, and then the <laughs> motherfucker who the last one to get told, we gonna, at like, Flex some shit or act like he did so the motherfuckers who told can feel like they telling is paying off. Mm -hmm. Like, man, fuck this shit. We grown. Did, did they, one thing they did when they weren't fighting fire, fires either, they had to keep the fire station cleaner than a motherfucker. Yeah, and they think that, see, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't do that. The, lo, the last motherfuckers who got hired, like, on the bottom with no seniority. I that's forget what, what they, they call them. Yeah, the, the straw man. <laughs> Straw man, and it's something else. Um, I, damn, I forgot what the greenhorn. Um, almost there. That's the same shit. Yeah, that's the same just what shit. they call yeah, the new motherfuckers. Airway, yeah, yeah, but yeah. On the so, TV show, it was some some crazy shit. Yeah, man. So they they think the the last couple months, like they hire these motherfuckers three four at a time. So the lowest motherfuckers on the totem pole, they got to clean up, answer the phone. Why, you know what I'm saying? Check out all the equipment. Stay up the latest and and, and just cook be the- Cook breakfast? Not necessarily. The old motherfuckers usually be the motherfuckers that cook breakfast because they okay. want everybody to know they can cook. Mm. Yeah. Right. But that shit look dangerous. Then it I, is, when, man. When you show up and some shit is fully engulfed. Fully engulfed fire in fire. everywhere. It's some motherfuckers who get off the truck and run straight in there. You yeah. know that? Yes, I saw it. Yeah. I was like, why would a nigga want to do this? That's what they train to do. And they, they be cool with like the fact that they might die in one of these fires. Yeah. They Some of them, not necessarily. On not the TV necessarily. show it was. It, it is TV. That's yeah. TV. Yeah. Nobody wants to die at work. Nobody. Give a fuck what your job is. There ain't a firefighter in this fucking country. They, everybody that was is, so brave, that, bro. Man, that's you brave because you do you save other people. It's not brave because you just ran into a fucking burning building. That's not brave. Yeah. Brave, like, you brave because you train for this shit, knowing mm -hmm. that one day you may have to go into a burning building and save somebody's life. But mm -hmm. the people who go in there, they not just motherfuckers who just gung-ho about the job. They go to training three, four times a year. They got this class. They got special. They like the Navy SEALs mm -hmm. of firefighters, the motherfucking first responders. Mm -hmm. They don't just call you that because you work there. Everybody on there ain't just there to put out fire. Mm -hmm. They got a whole bunch of motherfuckers. They got some people, they got engineers on the fire truck that can tell you the layout of the house and this is the point of attack. And 
we need to do this shit from here. We, is a, you know what I mean? They yeah, got people who, yeah, yeah. Cause, but everybody got a job. They got EMTs on the truck. They yep. got the motherfucker who drive the truck. Don't nobody drive the truck but them. It's not yeah. like whoever closest to the wheel. Like everybody got some shit to do. Mm. And my shit to do was to get the shit off the truck. I was the coldest motherfucker at getting shit off the truck. At, at, one, like, at one point, did you ever run into a burning building? I didn't run into a burning building. I've been in a building that was on fire, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like, uh, hey man, this shit is on fire like right now, yeah, currently. And it's, it's like, nigga, there's some fire floor. over there. This is where they've been putting fires out. Okay. Yeah, but I had to go to fucking um, fire academy shit, man. We had to do shit all the time. Like, mm. it was all fucking day from How the sun the up pay? to sun up, sun down. The pay for what I was, like, think about it. You got a job where you work for one day and then you're off, of, you work 24 hours straight. Then you're off for fucking 48 hours. You go to work two days a week, <laughs> fuck around and get off day and be off for a week and a half, two months or so, some shit. It just really depends on your shift. Yeah. Because your shift might get off, you know what I mean? Like, you can trade days with whoever will accept them. So mm. when the schedule come out, the whole next day, or t like next week, everybody just trading shifts. Mm. So say for instance, I had to go to work and I wanted to go get some pussy. I could just call my homeboy and be like, man, fill in for me for four hours. And then he'll come and then it's just like, that's how it work. Cause you getting the salary anyway. Mm. It's a, it's a you got salary. enough time to get another job. It's like a job. It's like you got a, a job with the city. Mm. You got all the benefits. You got, you know what I'm saying? And then you got time to have a job job too. Mm. You just have to be off on your ship day. How long did you do that? I did this, I was about probably like six or eight months, right around a year, something like that. It wasn't long. Did do like today. So that's when people were like, you were a firefighter? I was like, bro, you have no fucking idea. I really was. I really had the booty face and just the mustache. So well, let me ask you this, man. Um, now that now that you like you you are you are a superstar, do people that used to work with you at the fire station hit you up in your DMs sometimes? Nah, hey, no, it wasn't it wasn't but it wasn't but one or two or three of them people who really liked me for real. Okay, always. Yeah, always. That's in that's in every one of your situations, though. right? People don't really like you. I know it. Then when I was on Last Comic Standing, they kept trying to push this like firefighter angle and they wanted to go up there. I'm like, bro, these people don't fuck with me like that. Why? So they wanted that to, wanted that to make you a media darling that you was a fighter, fire fuck turn comedian. That. I wasn't a firefighter turn comedian. I was a nigga trying to get this money. Like I still am. Nigga, I ain't have to really do shit, mm. but a bunch of like bullshit, like, but in the most of that job, it's just nothing. Mm. Just fucking sitting around eating good shit. Mm. <laughs> you have to wash the truck <laughs> and then do, go over every piece of equipment. But the rest of that shit, man, I didn't. I wasn't stressing about that shit. Mm. Now being being inside a last coming standard, that's like a versus for comedians, right? Man, that say? ain't shit for a comedian. How the fuck you gonna judge some comedy? You can't what judge I was comedy. It, it's it's real people who don't even fucking tell jokes. Yeah, pretty much. How the fuck Roseanne made somebody laugh? <laughs> Are you she saying? not known for fucking humorous shit? I watched Roseanne coming she, up. She yeah, she had a, she can perform. She had writers. She ain't wrote now joke. I got it. I see what she you ain't went on stage told now joke. She ain't made nobody at Walmart laugh. I've never seen Roseanne do stand up. When you seen Keenan Ivory Wayne tell some jokes? I've stand up comedy. Don't you fucking lie to I, me? I, I, he went on tour with his brothers. But did you see it? No, I heard exactly. about it. Exactly. Shut I, your ass up. Right. That could be a rumor. It could be a rumor. How you gonna tell me then? I don't know how I could tell you this shit. I'm I'm trying Russell to Russell Peters. Out, it was these were the judges on my season. Yeah. Russell Peters. Yeah. He tell jokes all over the place. All over. I ain't never heard no nigga buy no ticket to no Russell Peters show. 
They, How they, you know anything about what niggas think is funny? You know comedians always be, man, Russell Peters be selling out. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just like they be trying to say Seinfeld funny. That's dick eating. That's dick eating. I say it. it I, I like, like I like comedians and cars. No, you like cars. You didn't give a fuck about nothing Sanfield ever said. You ain't even get it. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get it. I I just started trying to watch Seinfeld. Why? Just, because people told you it was good. It's bo- not fucking funny. I, I say when, when you was interviewing Godfrey, and you said Seinfeld wasn't funny. It wasn't. That's what I had. That's not gonna affect my career. No, no. The motherfuckers who mad about that <laughs> shit ain't never gonna fuck with me. I tried to watch it. I was trying to watch it. Let's see if I could. Let me, let me see what Carlos talking about. Cause this guy is. It's not. This guy was making a million dollar bro, episode. The, now. What difference does it make? So what? <laughs> money don't make shit good. That's what people don't fucking. Money don't make shit good. <laughs> but when you say comedy is relative, no. I would say that funny is funny. Mr. Bean ain't said a word. Everybody in the world know this nigga funny. Everybody, niggas who hate Mr. Bean done chuckled at his ass before. So Mr. Bean is funnier than Seinfeld. Yeah, well, nigga, maybe Seinfeld should have shut his ass up. Hey, Seinfeld You don't is, think you're too hard on Seinfeld? No, bro? man, that shit is cardboard. Cardboard. <laughs> shit, Carlos. Man, did, did, you that, ever meet, did you ever meet Seinfeld? What is coming from? I'm from watching being a fan of comedy. I like I can't have a, an opinion. You can have it. I was just I like asking. I can't have an opinion. This is not, hey man, okay. fuck that shit. This shit ain't good. Well, you ever heard that they're just saying, men lie, women lie, but numbers don't? Numbers Do lie all the time. <laughs> numbers lie all the time. Even Trump said that. They've never had this many people out here before. Nigga, yes, they have. Yes, they have. How every book is on the New York Times bestseller list. How long is the list? When the last time you picked up a book that wasn't a bestseller? A bestseller of what? I ain't never seen two copies of this book. Who bought them? You, I think you might be on to something. It only right. took two motherfuckers to tell you if a movie was good or not. It was Siskel and Ebert. It wasn't Siskel and Ebert in the rest of the neighborhood. Did you trust Siskel two and Ebert? Two motherfucking opinions. Did you trust them? Huh? Did you trust them? Had you ever seen a movie that they said was some bullshit that you said? They you don't tell right. you the ones that they don't like. Mm. They only to tell you the ones that they gave two thumbs up to. Right. That the studio Numbers probably paid for that. all the time. I see what you did just now. Your favorite Michael Jackson song ain't going to be in nobody else's top five because it's your favorite. Numbers lie all the time. Think about your, think about your most, your, your favorite Michael Jackson song that is, is his least popular song. You gonna think that everybody be like, this the shit that should've went platinum. Numbers lie. Just like we was sitting there talking about Ludacris best shit. That ain't even the shit that they made a video to. Numbers lie. We can make numbers lie like a motherfucker. We can make up a number like 99 million people watch my interview on Jack Thriller shit. We should do that. No, they we should, didn't. We should, yes, no, they we, did. We they watched definitely. it on the Underground app that we launched in Nigeria. They just, we could make up numbers, Jack. I see what you did. I see what you did. We create. We can. We can. We the makers of the dreams, and we can. We can create the narrative. We can set Bruh, the narrative up. That's why they made numbers. Not just to keep up and count shit. Just to. Nigga, I got a nigga. The first motherfucker who had a million dollars ain't had no million. Hey, bro, how much money you got? Shit, man. I, nigga, a million. What the fuck is that? Uh, this much. They ain't even have no million. So it's the manipulating confused. Bro, numbers lie all the time. Mm. Mm. Carlos, you got me. You, you, you got Jack, me thinking about Anytime you hear some numbers that's related to black people, yeah. It's a lie. 
Whoa. It's a fucking lie. Listen to the numbers. The numbers that say, according to the number of black people that they counted, one in three black people have AIDS or HIV. That's what I heard. That means three of us in this room got it. Do you see? Why you, the fuck she coughed after I said that? Maybe them numbers wasn't lying. She I'm, coughed like a motherfucker. I was so, glad she did it because I was going to try to holler at her. Oh, she coughing, Jack. <laughs> but I'm just saying, bro, think about it. Mm. They make up numbers all the time to make shit go, Jack. Right, right. Nine out of ten dentists. Every time, mm. nine out of ten dentists. They ain't made no shit in all this time that ten dentists can fuck with. Mm. Nobody ever thought to replace that objective motherfucker who always like, man, that shit ain't good. Mm. You know what? It's crazy that you say that shit too, man. Especially about the uh, the whole AIDS thing, because um, I was talking to Duval last week, and he was saying that I, in a uh, six hundred out of thousand people got AIDS. That's bullshit. That's what I was trying to tell him. I like that can't be true. It's bullshit. Where do they think we live, Jack? I don't, I don't want to say. If, if 600 black people out of a thousand had AIDS in America, it wouldn't be no more black people and you know that shit. But people living a long time with Nigga, AIDS. Nigga, shut your ass okay. up. You think, mother, much as white people hate black folks, you think they're going to let a bunch of sick niggas run around their America? The AIDS that don't even sound right, Jack. Yeah, you, the AIDS medicine is very expensive. Bruh, Why? Because they, Cause they don't die. sell a lot of it. They that's why. That's right. What right. are you talking about? Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even look at it like that. You're absolutely correct. Damn, Carlos. Man, the answers be in the question. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Carlos, I, I want to have a conversation with you. It was something that me and my boy was talking about the other day. Okay. What, what, you, what do you feel like? What, what's, your, what's your favorite stand up special? For real? Yeah. What What is your favorite stand up special? Um. <laughs> I got a lot of them, but if I just had to pick one, hands down. Um. <sighs> Damn, this is so crazy. Because I'm thinking of them. I'm trying to figure out. Let me see. Damn, Jack, that's a hard-ass question. All right. But if I had to pick one that ain't never failed to make me laugh, and it's just so obscure because it's like... <sighs> I would have to say... My favorite stand-up special is, is it that Chris Rock Bigger and Blacker? No, Bring the Pain. Bring the Pain. That's bring the one. Tall Salad Man. Tall Salad Man. Yeah, That's bring my the pain. favorite, too. Yeah, Bring the Pain. I that was Chris, because it's like, if you watch Chris Rock in that era of Chris Rock, right. man, that nigga don't miss. He wasn't missing, bro. That nigga don't miss, bro. Nope. And you know what else a dog ass stand up special? What? That goddamn Jamie Foxx, I might need security. Nick! That I motherfucker's so cold. Now, if I had a special, I want my shit to go like that, nigga. That nigga went the fuck off. Nigga, that Martin Bruntell, that, that, that bitch is a motherfucker, too. Yeah. You so, you so crazy. All the Martin stand-up specials is cold. Yeah. Richard Pryor live and smoking. That's one of my favorite stand-up specials. That fucking Dave Chappelle killing them softly. That shit Definitely. crazy because it's like, you get to see this and they really, it's kind of like, that's, you can tell that that shit ain't new, but when he doing it, it's like, he doing it with the attitude like, I told y'all this shit was good. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me see some. Voodoo Child, Eddie Griffin. There's wow. another one of wow. my favorite stand-up okay. specials. Um, another stand-up special. I think they got them, that, that Cat Williams, that- Pimpology. Man, the one with the green jacket. Yep, I was there. That one with that green jacket? I was there. Man, that's a statement I piece right there. I snuck in that motherfucker and asked him, could I, hey, you got open mic? I can open up. Nigga, that's a, that shit right there, that yes. one hard as a motherfucker. It was amazing. Uh, 
I like that Mike Epps stand up special. That one where he where he doing the jokes with the blue shirt. When that nigga, you know, when he just got on like the like the blue jean shirt, it looked like he had a club or some shit. I forgot the name of it. Damn man. When the nigga do the joke, when he be like, "This how niggas be standing outside the dope man house like I used to." Yeah. With the dollar. Look, I got the white boy. He shot me with yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I one. got that. That one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have that. What the fuck is that called? That Eddie Murphy Raw. That's another one. Yeah. That fucking Delirious was crazy too. The, raw or Delirious. Both. You got to choose one. Raw. Raw. Yep. So raw, raw really is better than Delirious, and why? It's not. It's not better than Delirious. It's just. It's. Uh. It's better. It's presented. a great follow. Okay. It's better presented. But that goddamn Delirious, that Goony Goo Goo, man. That's still one of the funniest fucking standalone jokes ever. Mm. Come on my house every year in Burma back the yard down, Gus. I'm sick of this shit. It's a motherfucking ridiculous. Mm. Look at Charlie. Charlie's scared. That man, Eddie Murphy, he's still like, I feel like he is the number one comedian. Mm. As long as he alive, he the number one, like he the king. Like he, he got that shit directly from Richard Pryor. Like he the nigga. He number one. He always gonna be number one. Best host alive. I don't. The best host. Best host. Who? You, you asking me? I'm I asking you. You asking, Are you asking me? me? Who's the best host? Yeah, for to you. Comedy. Yes. Shit, Jack. I don't know. Cause as soon as I answer the question, I'm gonna fucking remember somebody else. Um. What are we basing this off of? Like performance pieces or actual live shows that we've done? We we basing it off performance pieces. Of, I'm at because you know like that that whole on the fly. On, on the fly, um, in responses you. I'm Host of what? Like a comedy show? A comedy show. Of, of a comedy show and and keep it keeping it going. I want to better, better better hold on better yet better yet. Let's go ahead and rescale it back a little bit. Okay. Th that you've seen live. Um, there we go. <clears throat> shit, man, you making me think. I'm a, cause it's like I just got off tour, Jack. Yeah. So I'm thinking of everybody I just worked with. I just had. I just did a long run with some good ass hosts, man. Like I just got off the road with D Ray. D Ray is D Ray a good ass host. Good some ass more host. Good ass host. Um. Ricky Smiley, a good ass host. Great ass host, yeah. Oh shit. Let me see. Let me give you some more this good is, ass hosts. Yeah, you, you, you these know some who killers. else is a good ass host? Who's that? <laughs> Big Sean Larkin. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Shout out to Big Sean. Hell yeah. Definitely. Double D a good ass host too. Yes, he is. Double D had that motherfucking room. So ready. Did yes, he will. Um, I'm gonna throw some more. I'm gonna throw some Atlanta names in here. I like it. Okay, Ice Cream. Ice cream. Ice cream a good ass. Oh, wow. Host. Right. Okay. Charles Washington. Boy. Okay. Um, yes. Nard Holster. Yeah, 100%. Shout out to Nard. Kelly K Dub Walker. 100%. Uh, that's a bad motherfucker right man, there. Man, that's one of the baddest motherfuckers in the comedy game. Yeah. And I feel like I'm going to use every opportunity I get to bring his name up. Yes, you should. Because that nigga cold, bro. And there's so many people that still ain't got to see him in, in full capacity. Mm -hmm. Shout out to K-Dub. Um, Steve Brown a good ass host too. Yes, he is. Um, I, I want to say Benji a good host, but he do so much fucking time. Yeah. He know it too, but yeah. he always apologetic. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Got, he don't mean it. Shout out to Benji. But he don't mean it ain't it. malicious. Yeah, no, he, he don't mean it. in the fucking country know Benji gonna go over the time. He's malicious. I think it's malicious. It ain't malicious. It's selfish. It's not malicious it's because selfish. if it was malicious, he would he would pick who he does it to. Since he does it to everybody, I think it's not malicious. It's always gotta be about him. So, it's his show. You gonna get the money regardless. True. <laughs> True. And you ain't well gotta said. do that long, cause he yeah. gonna do some more time when you finish True. anyway. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of good ass hosts, man. It's a lot of good hosts. It's hard to say a best, cause everybody's still active. Yeah. And people gonna watch this shit and be like, nigga, you ain't say my name. You know I'm a good motherfucking host. Yeah. I be having them motherfuckers rock. I know, man. But nigga, it's 17 years of thinking of who's been a great host of, over the years. 
And I wanted to throw some people in there who need their name out. Yeah, they do. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they still out there rocking that shit right now. Mm-hmm. I, the best host I ever seen live, man, Jamie Foxx, Laugh a Loser. For real? Man, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh he did. my God. Yeah. I, but Jamie's my favorite. But that's all the time. thing about it, man. That nigga, he too good. He too good. He too fucking good at this shit. <laughs> He don't have he don't have to fucking sit here and go work out twenty times a week. That motherfucker walk on stage and he can do an impression of somebody. Can't nobody do an impression, bro. He gonna talk about some shit and the shit gonna be polished, man. And he one of the best storytellers in the whole entertainment game. Bro. Yeah, yeah. That nigga too good at this shit, and he can sing. Yeah, and do impressions and write jokes and. All that shit. Great actor. Great fucking actor. I, 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 um, I, I'm, 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 I think, I, I think, um, one of the first dope roles he ever had was Collateral, Dan Ray, and whatnot. But uh, uh-uh. he had one. The one. Of, this is the one that I knew that the nigga was gonna be Ali, good. One of his most slept on movies. That movie Bait. He was amazing in but Bait. But the fucked up thing about it is Will Smith had did just did Enemy of the State. Yeah. So Bait was like a bootleg yeah. Enemy of the State. But I like Bait better than Enemy of the it's State. It's definitely better than Enemy of the State. Because Mike Evans was in that motherfucker, yes, he man. Was. He was funny than a motherfucker, too. <laughs> and the thing about the fu- on Bait, it was all serious. That nigga wasn't telling, he wasn't trying to do no funny shit. Because mm-hmm. yeah. his undertones and his suggestive comedy, his light shit is is is. It's big. He's just a he's just a great actor, man. Yeah. And he, he's super. He, I don't think he's believable. Yeah, he's very believable. He's very authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very authentic, man. Thorough. I, I was about to say that he don't, he don't get enough credit, but no, the, the, the nigga got all every award that you can get. Right. He got every award, so he is. But he still right. don't have enough. He don't have enough. No, he wow. got every award, but they still owe him more shit. Just like mm-hmm. Angela Bassett. If Angela Bassett won everything she was ever nominated for from here on out, she still wouldn't have enough fucking awards. Mm. She didn't played every. Every significant black woman in history. Mm. Shit. She posted one fucking Oscar for Tina Turner. Mm. Easily. Her and Lawrence Fishburne. You telling me he shouldn't have won an Oscar for fucking Ike Turner? Mm. You tripping. Tripping. Samuel L. Jackson. He's supposed to win every award that he nominated for. Mm. Just like this the young one who, who I feel should win every award. Marseille Martin. The young girl from, from Blackish. She, oh, the youngest yeah. girl with the production deal. Yeah, she's supposed to win everything. Mm. I wanted to win everything. It's good to see like people getting the accolades and shit though. Um, Carlos, I don't never hear you talk about movies a lot. I ain't yeah. in no movies. Yeah, I mean, I, well, that's what I'm saying. Did, did you? Do you don't have aspirations to do that? Yeah, you act like I'm just turning down movies over here. You you ain't? No. I you- want to make real movies. I ain't talking about these goddamn. I want to be in love, you know what I'm saying? Like, B movies. I'm talking about box office movies. You want to be in Fast and Furious 12? Fuck yes. Mm. Shit exactly like that, Jack. Mm. Shit with car chases and explosions, French, bad guys, money talks, fast cars, pretty white woman titties, all of that shit. Yeah. Swordfish type. I want to be on Ozark. I want to be on all this shit. All the white stuff. That, that, yeah, yeah, I got it. Things that people I'm not trying to just put you to be on. I don't want to just be out here doing shit to be like, oh, yeah. I'm working. Hopefully they find. No, nigga. Yeah. I would much rather just get the chance to do this shit officially. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And some legendary shit. Like when they come through and remake Smokey and the Bandit or some shit. Mm. I want to be in there. Mm. One of them Big ass movies, Indiana hey, Jones, yeah. Jurassic Park, yeah, that type of shit. Mm. And then I want people to find out later on about comedy. I want to be like five movies up, mm. and they be like, oh, "That's the same dude." Exactly. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. One hundred percent. I like it. Hell I like yeah. It. TV series. Absolutely. TV series, are we, we going the same way? We going Bro, I want to be on a TV, TV series that I know getting picked up for another season. Okay. NYPD Blue okay. or some shit. Like, Bro, I would play a cop in a fucking TV show. Got it. you fucking right. I want to be the young black detective dude that's always undercover with the gun under my arm. 
pulling the cub over the body. Chief, they got him. Uh, leader of a local gang. I've seen this kid before, but I don't know who he is. That type of shit. Somebody cast this nigga. Come on, man. New York Undercover, the reboot. I would definitely do it. Whoever watching is casting people, no problem playing a detective on a fucking show. Especially one that's going to be on TV for the next 15, 20 years. Hey, you know, a show that they bringing back right now, man, that you, I, I would oh, look, love. Before we skip this, you talk about movies? Yeah. No TV shows? No, movies and TV shows. Yeah. I do want to play somebody's low-down ass husband on something. Okay. I do. I want to play a low-down, alcoholic, cheating on his wife, gambling ass failure. I like it. I like it. Let's biopic, any biopics. Uh, whoever. Is, you don't. I want to do. I wanna, nobody in particular? I want to play some somebody from Motown. That era, I will play a civil rights leader. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one I you look like. You got that down, dog. I, I, I you got that shit down. I would definitely play a civil rights leader. Oh, yeah, uh, a Black Panther. Um, I play. I play one of them motherfuckers that a turned Trek on Brown. the black community. One of them like CIA the informant type motherfuckers. I do that. Damn, bro. They let Lakeith Stanfield do it. Hey, bro. I think you'd be having some problems there now and then about that role. I would have played that role of that. I would have played Steven on Django. I've been good at it too. Mm. I would have liked to see you do that. I could Slave definitely that see turn that. on all the other slaves. Yeah, yeah. Villain, yeah. low he, down motherfucker. He pissed me off. Did it go right there, bro? <laughs> One of them niggas. Yeah, I got you. Be a good house, nigga. Um, what TV show, man? That I, that's coming back, man. I love to be on Quantum Leap, man. That shit was so hard. Bro, that's, do you remember the time, like, when your childhood was innocent and we didn't know that racism existed like that and mm -hmm. we, could, we could just watch shit like Quantum Leap and not give a fuck who was in it? Not give a fuck, yep. I just watch Miami Vice. Mm. I've been watching it lately. Lately? Just to go back and pick up on the shit I didn't understand. Because when I was a kid, I watched Miami Vice just for the cars. Yeah, the cars is after Ferrari, what? nigga. I was like, why did this nigga get fresh and go to the club every night to every get night. information? Mm -hmm. They were doing the coke they sell. I would love to play a drug lord in some too. Mm. Like one of them street niggas. Give me an example. Uh, you I don't mean like, like Nino Brown, like right? Like one of them dark skinned, like Spanish niggas. They don't never really tell you where they from. Nigga just be on the phone and like show like nigga with some stubble and he'd just be some lips and they'd be like, Tell your boyfriend that I want my money. Bang on me! And hang up the phone. What about a prison flick? I ain't really crazy about it, but I do it. <laughs> I do that shit. What if they remade Shawshank Redemption? You want me to be Morgan Freeman's role? I ain't mad at it. Nigga, they gotta let me do the voiceover though. You think you got that? I play Mr. in the color purple. I like it. I like it. You got that. Right. They always want to get a big, intimidating black man. Mm. Not even knowing that the craziest niggas it's is the littlest the little motherfuckers. 100%. In the black community. Mm -hmm. Look at all the killers. Yep. They all about, they about from 5'5 five, five to about 5'8. Five, yep. All the niggas who shot up the hood is little niggas. And the biggest niggas be the slowest niggas. Them be the pussiest niggas. Yeah. They be in jail because they be scared to tell on the little niggas. Mm-hmm. Going to any prison in America, I bet the littlest motherfucker in there running it. Yeah, 100%. I tell on anybody. What? Stop anybody, saying that, I don't that, give bro. a fuck. Stop saying that. But it's true. But I, you just stop promoting that. Promoting what? Because it make you look like a bitch. Why are Telling you people, oh, I snitch on everybody. Well, that don't make, no, well, no, 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 make real niggas want to be wait, around wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. I don't want to be around real niggas. What? Tell tell what I'm you saying it as a joke, but you just don't understand. You look like a bitch saying that. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. I don't be around people doing crimes. Okay, Jack, but you look, that's what I'm saying. Why are you sitting here talking about some snitching then? Well, let's check this out. If you live next door to me, right? No, I don't want to do hypothetical shit. Because you said we gotta this, go. no, that's what we got to go. No, you said that you were snitching real life. I'm not going to snitch on nobody that didn't do nothing to me. Man, or some, no, you're going to snitch on whoever. I'm not, I'm not snitching on random Man, people. A snitch ain't about to pick and choose when they gonna snitch. Yes, you they just do. said you gonna tell on anybody. You just said, this is what you saying, saying, I'm saying. that shit. No, no, Carlos, this is what you saying, I'm saying. You promote snitching. This is, no, I'm, so, I'm promoting man. telling. That's I'm the promoting same telling. thing. No, it's not. You a grown ass man. 
all you speaking out of is fear. What the fuck is you scared of? I'm oh, scared. I'm a snitch. No. You my, you doing this Steven shit in real life. You that shook that you going to snitch before some shit even happened. Listen, no, no. If you somebody, just said that. No. You, that's first not of true. all, you said you're not around nobody who's going to be doing crime. Right. When did you make up in your mind that if you ever so happen to be around some crime, you tell them? Hey, I, I got the ring on my door, right? Now, if somebody is coming around and to rob my neighbor and I got it on my ring camera. Did they rob you? I might the be next. What is you telling for? I might be next. Okay. We got to get this nigga off the streets. All right. It might be one of your niggas. Why you think they didn't rob you? I don't want them robbing anybody. All right, man. You know how much time you get job. for armed robbery or robbery, breaking and entering, burglary? And you know, every However time you, much time you got, them niggas going to be home in two summers. You still going to be living where the fuck you live. Out here trying to be a hero and shit. Hero ain't <laughs> nothing but a sandwich, Jack. <laughs> Carlos, you only feel that way because nobody ain't robs you. If somebody robs you, you don't know what I've been robbed before. And you didn't I've tell. been stolen from. And you didn't tell on the No, I'm not. I'm a black man, bro. Yeah. I'm not calling no fucking police. What are you gonna do? I'm a, hey man. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. I'm alive. We'll get some more shit. Niggas then, still. Then you just gonna let it go. You gonna charge it to the game. That's the game, ain't it? You've been, hey, dog, I've been heard you talk about this fruit tree for a long time. Yeah. You think I'm going to tell? If you found I'm out. I'm letting motherfuckers know, hey, I was a victim. Okay. Somebody came into my yard and stole something. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying these people, need, I'm just saying watch your motherfucking yard. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come rob you and you want to tell, tell. Mm -hmm. So, Carlos, if you saw them, if you would happen to be home that day, what you would have did? It would have been violence. Because I live in Georgia and I know the law. I know I, the law, Jack. I'd rather for them to be in jail than you to shoot them. I never said nothing about shooting anybody. When you come on private property, your ass is grass. Your ass is grass. Wh who's to say? It might be four, five, 15, 20 years before they find your ass fuck around on somebody private property. Don't nobody know you over here? You watch shit every day, documentaries on Netflix. How motherfuckers then buried these folks in the yard and put a swimming pool on top of them. Ain't nobody found them till they goddamn sold a house 30 years later. I guess when you put it like that, Carlos. I'm just saying, you never know who you fucking with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's some shit that you can do that's way worse than snitching to some on somebody, Jack. Yeah, I, I don't want to do. I don't want to do well, that. All I'm saying is, be I don't careful. Have that in me. Be careful who you out here fucking with. I don't want to fuck with nobody. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't yeah, that, Carlos, I don't want no problems, bro. I can tell. I really don't. That's why I don't want you out here promoting bullshit. Snitching and stuff. I, I don't want nobody to be getting robbed. I don't want nobody to hurt nobody, man. What and if you if, snitch and you still got to go to jail, Jack? What if I snitch and still got to go to jail? You know what they'll do to you in there if you snitch and still went to jail? They will pop your eye out and fuck that hole. <laughs> That's how they do snitches, Jack. <laughs> That's what they doing in the snitches now? Yeah. They fucking him in the eye. In the eye. Even worse than that. And then they just, they don't even kill you, Jack. They just, they beat you up every day so much that it just make you wish you was dead. They, but they gonna keep you alive just to keep that hole. Cold world we live hey, in. Hey, you didn't you didn't made me you didn't change me today. I know. I'ma mind my business. I'ma mind my that shit ain't got nothing That's to do with it. That's why you me. got that ring camera though, just so you can record the happenings. Yeah. Found anything good on there? No, I nothing. Like you live in, you got an apartment or like a hallway a, or something? A, 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 a condo. Uh but, but you ain't caught nobody like sucking a titty in the hallway or never. nothing. Never, nothing. Ain't no little kids been fucking around at your door grabbing mm -hmm. their dick like this or nope, nothing? No, never, yeah. never. That's what most people I find. I stay in the corner, like though. Like the people who live in the building, they be having yeah. kids, and kids see that shit, they be like, fuck you, punk. 
<laughs> my neighbors really respect me. I stay like around a lot of cool white people, man. And it, what does that I, mean? I, I don't have to tell no. I don't have to tell. They're gonna tell for me. Oh, they're well, gonna tell what, for what's me. What's your definition of cool white people? Cool white people. Uh, they always open the door for me. Um, they they knock on my door to see if I need anything too. Like what? I don't like, you know, did like a ride or some shit like Have that. Have you ever needed anything? No, I never did. You should start telling them you need some. Ask them if they got some cookies over there. White people keep some cookies. True. True. They'll make you some cookies. Right, right, right. Is it like a couple? It's a, it's, a, it's random people because they know I'm on Wild and Out. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'd be, they randomly come up to the door and just, hey, is everything all right? And then, you know, they, they can see, they like, see that's me. That's one with my... thing that I'm starting to take advantage of now. What's that? When people ask me shit like that, I yeah. ask for shit. Mm. Hey, is everything all right? Hell no, nah, I ain't no breakfast today. What y'all eating? Just start asking for shit, man. Hey, man, you might be on to something, dog, because I don't right. eat with every, every, I don't, every, I don't eat every, with the shit I want every it, day. It's not about just eating. Just start asking for random shit. Like what? A ride to Publix. I be needing to ride to Publix, girl, Carlos. Ask. They, I be needing I mean, to ride to Publix. Gonna keep, is everything okay? Is there anything I can do for you? Yes. I'm going to find you something. You ain't going to keep asking me. You know when people, you go over people's house and they be like, make yourself at home. Treat my house as if it was yours. Yeah. I do shit like I'm at home. Mm. Like if, even if I was just stopping through for a few minutes and they tell me that, I, I'm the type of nigga, I throw some wings out in the freezer and fry them bitches. Don't tell me make myself at home. Mm. Cause I will. And you'll cook all the wings. I'm talking about a whole and, 20 and, pack. I cook and a eat two. I throw out a family pack of wings. And just eat two. Yeah. And leave them right and there on the counter. And get two to go and be out there. And, Mm. Carl, uh, best advice you ever got and who did you get it from? Uh, I always say this is some of the best advice I ever got, but this is just one of these moments that just stuck out to me. I was at the liquor store one time by my house, back when I lived in the hood. I used to just go in the liquor store and talk shit sometimes. It was this drunk dude standing in the middle of the store and he was just standing there. He ain't never seen me before. He just looked at me, he said, Young man, you might well do what you want to do anyway. They ain't, feeling, they ain't gonna like you no way. And that's just advice that stuck out to me. That shit sound right. Do yeah, you might, he might? He said you might as well just do your thing, man. They ain't gonna like you anyway. It don't matter if you do what they, what you want to do or what they want you to do. They still not gonna like you. Kind of like what you said earlier when we first started. What I said. They ain't gonna like you anyway. That's right, 100%. That's some of the best advice I got. Um, some more good ass advice is just to be fearless. And life taught me that. It's like, you don't never want to have no regrets or starting off like, oh, I should have, man, I should have stuck with my first mind. Damn, if I would have just listened to myself. Sometimes you come up with what's best for you first, but you got to be able to trust yourself to know that this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And you feel better about decisions that you made by yourself. I can live with the consequences of the decision that I made, knowing that didn't nobody try to push me to, oh, man, you should do this or you should have got that. Like, I'm happy with the decisions that I make for me. Worst advice you ever got? Some of the worst advice that I've got in life has always started out with, man, all you got to do. Anything after that is some terrible advice. Mm. That, um, yeah, that's 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 how all the bad advice starts. Mm. But I haven't really been around nobody who really just gave me no like real bad ass advice. Mm. I I kind of try to stay around some respectable people. I did hear this dude in the hood say, "Man, I smoke crack because ain't shit else to do." I think that's probably some of the worst shit I've ever because heard. Because there's a lot of shit to do. There's so much other it's shit. There's so much shit to do. <laughs> that he could have been doing. Mm. Hey, um, Carlos, man, are you, are you like me? Or do uh, you consider yourself like somebody that wants to be poly? Or you can you see yourself getting married one day? I want to have two girlfriends for a period of time. And I want, you, I'm a, I want a wife. I want a wife now, actually. Right now. 
right now. I want a wife. Have you you? But you, to just be completely honest with you, it's about three or four women that I just want to have sex with. Honestly, I ain't want to make that sound dirty. No, you're saying you you want a wife. But I want a wife, but I mean like if I like say for instance, I knew who my wife was. Right. And all I had to do was just like seal it. I would let her know that like, hey, it's still like three more women I want to hit. I don't want to be with them. I don't want to do nothing. I just, it's just three that I'm just like, it's three, three to five women that I'm just incredibly sexually attracted to. And like, before I put my nuts up and be all just one pussy for the rest of my life, I want to, I want to at least see if I can hit two of them. But that's it. That's, that's, that's fair. Carlos, that's you, fair. You well off though. You, you doing good for yourself. You could. And I really, that's what I'm saying. I, I live comfortably within the boundaries of myself. And you say, so you saying that like a, a lifestyle like that would, you know, take you out of your comfort zone. No, that would actually be so fun and exciting to me. I've actually been wanting to be with two women. Like, you deserve that. In a relationship with yeah. them, not just fucking them. That's fun too. Yeah. But you get addicted to that shit. Yeah. Like once you start having threesomes and shit, yeah. you start wanting to have the motherfuckers like. Yeah. It really weekend or some mm. shit. That's when you like it's 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 amazing when you when it's sporadic. Yeah. But when you start craving that shit, yeah. That's when shit can be. That's when shit could be a problem. Right. What what kind of problems you done ran into? Huh? What kind of problems have you ran into with the threesomes? Shit, want them all the time. Just as simple as that. That's that's the only problem. The only thing that I be confused about when I'm having a threesome and whatnot is like, do I, was I supposed to, to put on a whole nother condom with the other girl? Yes. yes, Jack, you can't be in no threesome with no one fucking condom, dog. Yes, you are. I, only, I ain't never had no problem with a threesome except one time that she was sitting on my chest while I was eating the pussy and that made my chest hurt. You know, you got to scoot up. Yeah. But she was sitting right on my breastbone. Yeah. That tailbone on the breastbone. I hate that. Right. Because you, you can't have to eat a lot of pussy in a threesome. Don't nobody tell you that. No, yeah. That's yeah. a lot of pussy to eat, bro. It is. You catch a cramp in your tongue and your jaws hurt. Yeah, you got to have water. People don't say that about threesome. They don't. You got to have some water. Yeah. All that sucking and shit. Yeah. Man. It, it's a lot. Pussy it? make your mouth dry as hell. Yes, it do. It could be wet pussy, too. That's yeah. the craziest part about it. And when, e even when it's shaved, you can still swallow a hair. I don't, I don't know where it come from, but I didn't still swallow I some really hair. You know, I prefer a little hair on the pussy. You At do? least a little hair. Old oh, school. But I don't mind a lot. Mm. Right, because all the pussy I ever wanted had some hair on it. Mm. And I don't know where this bald pussy came from. Did this, that I, shit seems so childish to me. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. It's very immature. Yeah, yeah. I don't want no bald pussy. I want to know this pussy is an adult. Yeah. Has places to be. Yeah. Like pussy with hell on it looked like it got some like an agenda or something. Yeah. I feel like ball pussy been outside all day at day parties, smoking hookah, just doing way too much. Yeah. That's you like cause my uncle always you asked me some of the best advice I ever got. Yeah, I wanna know. My one of my uncles told me, he said, Hey, bald head pussy ain't hitting no shit. That's why it's bald. Mm -hmm. Too much going on. Mm -hmm. Cause the Rolling Stone gathers no moss. Do that one more time. The Rolling Stone gathers no moss. The bald head pussy too busy. That's why I want no hair growing. Too Got much it. going on. Got it. Rolling Stone gathers no moss. She ain't never in one place it's long enough. To... You'll get it. What, what you think about having a Buddha hole? You cool with that too? I mean, I don't know, Jack. That's a very strange question, but I don't necessarily have a preference on that. Like, I like a smooth booty. Got it. Got Smooth it. booty. Because I like women with pretty asses, so. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Little stretch marks on that bit, on the side. Oof. Me too. You, you ain't got to be too smooth. I like, I want to. How you feel about, uh, you know, the uh, uh, with the BBLs and the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the I don't implants. really, I mean, I don't prefer that. You don't prefer I understand it. why some women mm -hmm. get that. If it's to make them feel, you know, if that's yeah. what she wants, but that's not my thing. I like natural bodies. You couldn't marry that. I'm not. 
I don't want to knock nobody's surgery because I know that's a very sensitive subject. No, no, 100%. That's not my preference. Got I'm it. from the South. I'm from the country. Yeah. All our women be thick fine. You feel what I'm saying? So if she always aspired to be thick fine mm -hmm. and she wanted to move some shit around, that's, that's her business. Mm -hmm. Everything ain't about vanity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that shit be really fucking with them ladies' mind and they just, you know, they be insecure. Like, I feel like it's cool to fix your insecurities. But just to be out here getting surgery, I feel like that's crazy because you're already fine. Mm. And then a lot of women, they be getting this shit too early. Like women body changes late, later on in life. Like some motherfuckers don't get fine until they get 30, 35. Mm. Ass get all fat, hips start spreading out, titties get big. I just feel like you just might be robbing yourself of that. Mm. What if it still happened? True. But I prefer natural. I can dig it, I can dig yeah. it. Where you at with interracial dating? I'm not anywhere with it. Do that I'm, again? I'm not anywhere with it. Oh, okay. Did, 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 you, did you not into it? What all? you mean? Like, can you can you date white girls openly out in? Why would I? I mean, there are so many other motherfuckers to choose from. Why you have to say white ladies first? Um, it's, it's natural. Oh, um, I don't. I'm not opposed to anything. Gotcha. I feel like shit at this point. If you like it, it that, go with it. Bro, look how much shit done changed in our lifetime. Come on now. Do that. that Do that. Uh, uh, an interracial relationship, the last thing you should worry about. They got all kind of relationships we don't even know the names of yet. Whatever color your woman is or your man, she is man, woman. Mm. Fuck it. It ain't up to me. Love ain't got no I don't, color. What if I say, hell no. And then the richest white lady in the world was watching this shit and was like, well, now you didn't miss I'm, that. I don't give a fuck. I'm leaving for the right circumstance. Yeah, 100%. I'm out of here. Mm. Fuck being loyal to stupid shit. Mm. I'm going with it. Well, I'm appreciated. That makes that make too much sense. And that well, don't look like nothing, right? Huh? And that don't look like anything. Right. You don't know what fucking color that could be. Loyalty look like loyalty. Did that just show you how small our world is? I All we know you... is black and white. That's deep. That's deep, bro. There's a million motherfuckers over here. Yeah. Girl of your dreams, live in the fucking Himalayas. 100%. Watch everything you do. Then she find out you don't want her. <laughs> hey, what's next for 85 South, bro? Shit, everything. We we uh, we trying to get on that Tyler Perry shit. Okay. We want to drop 52 movies, 36 plays, radio show, XM, satellite radio. Um, I'm trying to be on the TVs at Walmart. Um, so I want to do some, some clean content for the kids. I want to do like a hood Sesame Street, mm. some cartoons. Um, I'm trying to help some motherfuckers go to college. Uh, we trying to give back to the Boys and Girls Club, build up the community, raise some money, throw some, some charity events, throw some community events, throw some events for the grown folks, liquor, Blunts, everything, bro. We want to touch the entire culture. We coming out with some chips. I'm working. I want to get my own sneakers. Uh, I'm coming out with some jogging suits for the old niggas. If you don't mind, I appreciate that. I we wanna need come that. out with some silk bonnets for the ladies. Okay. Um, some waist trainers. Okay. Uh, car show. Man, my hand, I'm trying to do it all, Jack. Mm. I want to do everything. Ain't no cap. No cap, bro. I'm Dead. trying to do this shit big like Facebook, man. There it is right there, trying man. Trying to run it up. First, I want to get about, I want to get about 20 to 50 million dollars so I can get used to having some money. Then I want to take the 50, flip that to about 500. Then take that 500, double down and turn that to a billion. You know, then take that billion and then, you know, just start putting some resources in place where it can be some young black billionaires. Some young black billionaires. Some shit you ain't gotta wait until you're 40, 50 years old. You feel me? I wanna create so many avenues of revenue and so many revenue streams that somebody step in and show me how to get even richer. You feel me? I'm building Noah's Ark just to change the whole landscape. Like Master P changed the landscape in the rap game and yeah. brought some money to that bitch. Yeah. I want to do that for comedy and, yeah. and entertainment. 
And let me ask you this. Why do you think people ain't like follow Master P blueprint like to the T after that and put out 45 albums in a year? Like, I don't. They were intimidated. And plus, he was the only one who was getting all the money. He had the best deal. He'd be a fool not to do that. He's smart enough to know that. And once he saw that it was working, he worked it. I, I, it just killed me to, to see that everybody don't do that. You know what I'm but saying? But still, to this day, people still beg for a record deal. Then two years later, they complain and tell you that the record label fucked them. It's. I was watching the uh, the boy Eric Bellinger on a Tank podcast. Right. Saying he just put out twenty nine. He put out. He didn't put out twenty nine albums to this day. For real. Independently. Yeah. He should keep doing it. Yeah. He I was saying the doing. same thing. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't no such thing as oversaturating when, you That's know, it's a demand. That's the thing people, maybe they scared of the work. Yeah, they scared That's of the they're work. They're scared of the work, the footwork, the actual working part of it. That might be intimidating to them. You know how many um, projects the uh, Gucci man got, bro? Shit, probably a couple hundred. A complete project. Yeah. I used to buy Gucci man mixtapes from the gas station across the street from my house every other day. He got about 10 volumes of that Will Chamberlain shit. Maybe 15 or 17. Waka Flocka put out a gang of fucking mixtape when the mixtape game was going crazy. It's a lot of mixtapes out there that don't, they go, that's gonna get lost in the sauce. Because mm -hmm. we could all sit here and name our favorite mixtapes. And hell, we probably ain't even heard all of them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that everybody would name. So, well, man, what's up with you dropping your music, man? I don't have no music to drop. So you 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 mean to tell me you ain't you ain't got twenty songs? Uh uh. I need to lock in with a producer with an actual studio and go record some shit. Anybody know a producer with a studio? You just put out the APB. I gotta find me a producer with a studio that you can smoke in. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna be hard to find for you, bro. I don't know, man. That rap shit get kind of shaky. What you mean? Man, these niggas, it be so much shit going on in them studios, man. I'm much, I much, it's gotta be somewhere private. I ain't, I don't do public consumption. What, what you think about, you know, building a studio in your crib? I'm building a studio in my studio. That's, that's a flex, ain't it? I, my studio gonna have a studio in it. I just caught up. Yeah. I just caught up. You know we got a whole fucking studio coming. Yeah. So you asked what was coming next for 85 South yeah. Show? We got our own studio. Okay. How many square feet is it? About 10,000 close? 10,000 square feet. And now it's a party. Okay. That's what's up, man. Hey, Carlos, dog. You, you, this this uh interview right here, man, ain't been nothing but impressive, man. You think so? I, and it, it's been Did a dream for me. Did we give him enough? Huh? Did we give him enough? I, I think that we got a bunch more to give him and whatnot. Yeah. Let's go and spread it out. Yeah, man. Let's spread it out. Man, I'm proud of you, though, Jack. You were in this media shit way before all of us even caught on to what it was, man. What's been your experience with it? Like... You got a lot of knowledge and a lot of know-how, man. How do you think, or how do you see us taking this shit to the next level and making it real lucrative, man? Hey, man, uh, one thing that I've learned uh, over the years is consistency is the name of the game. One thing that I didn't, um, I never did learn was the, the, the shit that you guys have mastered, and that was the structure and, the, and business model. Right. And, you know, I- How were you doing it? Just dropping that shit, getting the I was dropping right it, there. man. And I, was, I was dropping it, and I was doing it what they call for, for the culture. Right. And for the love of it. You, you still know? own that shit? I own my shit, yeah. I own you mine. own all your shit? I own my, all my shit, but a lot of the, of course, the difference is 50 stuff, is that belongs to 50. Yeah. Well, he still want it? Why, what are you gonna do with that? He should give you that. He, don't, he can't do nothing with it. <laughs> Hey, you gonna see him soon. How you figure that? Are you going to the comedy show? No, nah, he took me off. They, well, I'm gonna say he did, because I know he probably don't even fucking know it. I'm gonna be like, yo, what a little nigga had that I put on this? Nah, bro, they got mad and took me off the flyer. They took me off the show because they saw that I was on a flyer to go to Trey Day as a guest, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an appearance. 
And they said that I, I violated the radius clause, bro. So I was like, I'm still going to trade it. That's petty. That's that very is, petty. But I mean, bro, my name is good. My name sells tickets. I'm great. I'm insured for my performance. The dope is good. So if that if you really think that me being in the city, that could do nothing but help. So whoever did that, that's why I don't fuck with promoters. You could take me, listen to me, promote. You could take me off every show. I don't give a fuck. I have a whole ass tour that I own. I have a whole ass brand that I own. You're not doing me no fucking favors. You think I give a fuck about performing for some celebrity? I don't give a fuck. Nigga, I'm famous. The fuck? What's wrong with these people, Jack? Hey, dog, they got Just this shit know, fucked up. You can't fucking fire me. I quit. Take me off the flyer. So what? I don't need this shit. I'm good. I love everything you're saying right bro, now, bro. Fuck, I don't need nobody to put me on no show, bro. I book all my own shows, nigga. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> I've been doing this shit. I'm, from, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be fucking with you, Carlos. Bro, you see it. They be like, hey, low guy. When, when, no, I don't know. No, I don't give a fuck. I don't want to. Dead. I don't want you to pay me. I don't want you to pay me a rate. I want all the money. That's how much it costs to get me for the show. Mm. All of it. Because mm. we sell the tickets, we do the work, I want all the money. Mm. All of it. 80 90% of it. Mm. That's it. That's, unless you cool with that cut, if I can't, if it ain't a 90 10 split, don't talk to me. I like it. I, 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 I feel like I'm on the right team, Carlos. I you feel, are. I we're appreciate not fucking, it. We're not to be hired, man. Dig. Just like that. We are bosses. Just like that. We don't need people. We don't need people making money off of us. We need to be making money. If if a promoter puts you on a show, right? Yeah. And make a flyer uh -huh. and send you the flyer 20 times and tell you to post it. Uh -huh. What the fuck do you need to be working with him for? Nigga. You can make your own flyer. I heard what you just said. And post that shit and sell your own venue and make all the money by yourself. If you don't think you can afford to get three of your partners and y'all put up your own money and get a venue and get your own flyer and everybody post it, whether you sell 50 tickets or 500, you and your partners split the proceeds after you deduct what you already spent. Now, if y'all only made $700 a piece, then you didn't have to fucking buy no fucking Spirit Airline ticket, get no cheap ass hotel, no bullshit ass rental car. That's the first fucking positive money you have made all week. Now yeah. you take that $700 and now you do it even bigger. And you flip that shit until y'all busting down a bag. It's not hard. This is simple. You mad at niggas for not putting you on the show. You ain't rented out. Now one of these Holiday Inn ballrooms and invited the 30 niggas from your hood who been telling you they waiting on you to do your own show. You think just because it's, it's 30 motherfuckers paying $30 a piece and they going to come to the shit and spend $30. Add it up. You can pay yourself more money than you have ever made by being booked. You just lazy. You got a smartphone. You got the internet. You got money in your pocket. You got a little side bitch who gonna throw you 300. What are you doing? And those put me on. Put yourself on. Put your goddamn self on. Ain't nobody put me on. You know how much money I had to spend to get to this point, you know how much money I spend every month making sure I don't have to get a job? Fuck how much I made. Think how much I spent. You know how many people I pay? Every time I get some money, somebody else, I ain't getting no money by myself. I'm paying for everything. Everything costs. Anybody you see me with, they are not with me for free. I'm trying to make sure everybody eat. But whatever. Keep letting these people rob you. Hey, but who put you on to this, though, dog? Me. You? 
Not stupid. You figured it out. I figured it out, bro. Even before I was to the point where people were booking me to go and on the road and be a comedian and do shows, Jack. You seen what I did? One hundred. I went to every club that liked me and yeah. got me a night. Yeah. The club that always, man, when you come back to my spot, you want something to eat? You want something? No, I don't want nothing to eat. No, I don't want nothing to drink. But I do want you to let me come in here on Wednesday night, on y'all little slow night, on y'all old people night, on y'all night that ain't shit going on, cut the game on, and let me get, just let me uh get that little spot right there in the microphone, and y'all throw me two, three hundred dollars, and you know, oh okay, that's nothing. Then give me three weeks, so that bitch gonna be packed on Wednesday night. They ain't never had a Wednesday night packed ever, to mm. the point where shit. The comedy room I started 10, 12 years ago, this shit still goes on. I yeah. ain't been there in six, seven, eight years. Show enough. Show enough. I see what you did, Carlos. This thug motivation for your ass. So these motherfuckers out here, they not taking advantage of the shit that's, that's and then around. They got all the social media shit too, man. They think that they rather talk to motherfuckers who not there. Mm -hmm. Didn't actually go outside and get some money. Mm -hmm. It don't happen like that for everybody. Mm -hmm. Fuck how much content you put out there. If you keep doing the same thing with no results, that's exactly what you're going to have. That's right. That's insanity. That's insanity. You're just waiting on some shit to happen. Mm -hmm. Do something else in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can get money off social media. Mm -hmm. But until you figure out how to get money off that shit, mm -hmm. you got to be getting some money outside in real life. Right. Don't just wait on shit to happen. It's going to take some dedication and you're going to have to stay fast and hold down and you're going to have to stop spending way more than you fucking making. First of all, I think everybody can get money. It's just scary, the shit that you will have to do, Jack. How many times you going to eat noodles before you can stack this money up? Mm -hmm. Just drink water. How many times you going to stay at the crib? How many times you not going to buy them kicks? You're not going to go fuck off this money. You for real down about your hustle. That's how you fucking make a breakthrough, Jake. That's it. That's I'm talking it. about all them days where if it wasn't me working or fucking going to make some money, staying at the crib, staying out the way, not going to post up, not just going to be seen, not just hanging out. That's the fucking, that's when you start figuring out, okay, this the shit that's costing me money. Being around these people is costing me money. This is causing me to lose money. This is the time that I don't have shit to do. These are, you need to flip everything. You get rich in your free time, man. You get rich in your free time. You gotta get rich in your free time, mm -hmm. bro. You mm -hmm. can turn your fucking hobbies into your hustle. Yeah. Like yeah. if you got a job and you hate your fucking job, but you know that you the best at your job and you don't do your job somewhere outside of your job for yourself to make your own money. You smoking dick. I don't want to smoke dick. I'm just saying that's 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 what that's what that that's what it feels like. Right. You fucking off life, man. Right. We all got a purpose. Yeah. But we all got a talent too. Mm. And we all got greatness inside of us. Capitalize off the shit that you can do naturally better than anybody. I've always been a shit talker. I've been talking shit since I learned how to talk. This is just a natural progression. I didn't have to pick this job. Mm. Only job I never had to apply for. Man, what's been the greatest part of this whole ride for you, bro? The journey. The journey. Making a way out of no way. Taking rejection and flipping that shit. Being at the right place at the right time. Creating your own luck. Mm. The people that you meet. Mm. The things that you see. The places that you go. The, the, the traveling. Mm. Seeing the world. Expanding your mind. That's the best thing about it. You get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. the, the ladies that you see, things that are stimulating to your visuals and your insights, the uh -huh. ideas that you, like, you know what I'm saying? It's the things that you never thought you would do, man. The fun that you have that you never thought you would have when you up at three, four, five in the morning and at, in Germany, having breakfast with some people who don't even you never thought you would be having breakfast with or just fucking traveling through other countries and driving and shit and just experiencing what life is like well beyond where you come from. Right. That type of shit. 
Damn, man. What, what, what's some places you been that you never thought you'd go? Kuwait. Kuwait. Dubai. These are all places I went for shows, too. Like, I'm doing comedy. Doing all you was on Equate on the base? Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, Drew Hill just left there last week. Bro, it's like, lit. what the fuck y'all doing in Kuwait? Bro, that shit be so crazy when you see them soldiers. They just be so happy to see somebody from home. Yeah. That'd be dope. I went to Kuwait. I went to, I've been to Dubai. I've been to St. Thomas. I've been to Curacao. I've been to Bahamas. Um, Germany is my favorite place. I keep speaking it up because I want to go back. Um, Africa? I haven't been to Africa. Really? I haven't. I want to go eventually. But I, I'm, I haven't been. I want to go to Australia. All types of shit. Brazil. So, yeah, I got, I still got a lot of work to do. But I've been a lot of places that I never thought I would go, bro. I've been to most of the states. You feel me? So This car thing, man, they're like, your love for cars. Where does that come from? And how many you got at this point? I ain't getting too far. In I don't know. I don't know the count. I got a lot of them, though. But mm -hmm. I've always loved cars since I was a kid. I used to always have like Hot Wheels and shit. Mm -hmm. Like I always had way, way more Hot Wheel cars than anybody. Mm -hmm. You know those fucking bags that like when you buy a new comforter? Yeah. Like I had like three of them just full of Hot Wheels. Do you have a favorite car or all of them your favorite car? I got a lot of favorite cars, man. A lot of them. Um, What's the most unique thing you got? Like for instance, uh, watching Gone, Gone in uh, 60 Seconds, right? Yeah. With Nicolas Cage and you know they they talking about the Shelby, the Eleanor. whole yeah. Eleanor. Um, yes. Or or you talk you talk about power, the Tommy's car. Yeah, the Boss Mustang three hundred two. Yes. Uh, my it would probably be my sixty nine Camaro. I got a hard ass sixty nine Camaro. But everything I got, I got more than one of. So I got a sixty nine and sixty eight. Camaro. I love Corvettes and shit like that. A um, few dope ass Monte Carlos, Grand Nationals, all type of shit. Do you modernize them too, or you yeah, keep I the put, original I shit? Them up. I don't know. The original shit is outdated. Okay, so I try you, to go as I try to put like it's like Night Rider in your car. Yeah, I, I try to put as much new shit on the old car as as I can without it being crazy pimp my ride type shit. Got you. <laughs> Got yeah. you. And when when you what's too far on some pimp my ride type shit for for your cars? Like you like no, nah, I don't want that. Is that is that TVs inside the headrest? Don't or nobody do that shit no more. Don't nobody do that. So now nah, that look, um, even that look is played. Yeah, wow. You feel me? Yeah, I'm, I've been going that a long shit time. Look like oh five. When yeah. You, when you see it, like yeah. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I put some Wi Fi on some shit. Okay. I definitely throw some Wi Fi on, on like. a on, on a, any fucking vehicle. I'm looking into putting some Wi-Fi in some of my, my old shit in there. Did you, uh, did you make a push button start on there? Oh, I'm not crazy about them. No? Like, cause on a, on the old school, them shits is kind of faulty. Okay. Like, it's so much shit that could be happening with an old car. You don't want no shit like that on there. Mm. Not, not unless you a certified mechanic or some shit. Cause mm. just think worst case scenario, you fuck around and Somebody fuck around and hit that button and it gets stuck. Or the, the shit behind, like they fuck the mechanism up in the button and like, mm. I could just see too much shit going wrong with it. Mm. But you know, I ain't been converted yet. I to, can do to that. But I, I, I try to keep that shit looking real nice and clean, bro. Mm. That's my shit. Do you guys a couple of play cards where you just take it to the rain, the dog out of this hit donuts in and shit, and that's what you strictly what that car is for? Or all of your cars special and you treat them, you treat them special? Um, I drive the shit out of my car, Jack. I don't baby none of them. You don't baby none of them? I don't. Any one of them can get it. Any one of them, bro. That's the whole fun of them. We, drive, we buy these bitches to drive them. Not baby them. Mm. If they tell, fuck it. You they take them out of town too? But this is the thing about it. It was gonna happen either way. True. Yeah. I take I love to drive my shit out of town. Mm. That's what I was just really sitting here having a debate about, man. I gotta buy some newer shit. I got too much old shit. What what made you why why you feel that way? Sometimes you just need to jump in some some reliable ass shit and drive the fuck off. Got you. I gotta give me like a Benz or something. Mm. Something. 
I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. Well, and you talking about just for simply to go to your your shows and stuff like that. Just if I want to stretch out and you know, got might, you. might want to ride on with a nice young lady, rub on a thigh or something. Yeah. Open the moon. Roof I like doing and, stuff like you that. You feel me? Yeah. She, Cause women like new shit. Mm. I mean, she'll weekend ride in the old school with you, but yeah, they they get the complaining like, oh, I don't want, it's out of here. Like, okay, just give it a second. Damn, mm. it's old school, baby. They be used to that them challenges and horse hellcats and shit. As soon as you jump on AC blowing snow and shit and screens lit up. I'm like, baby, but this is not that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna have to throw I'm gonna have to throw me some new shit in there, Jack. I can dig it. Yeah. Anything in particular you looking at right now? I am Oh, did nothing. you just call it out? Nothing really. Nothing really. I might I was thinking about getting me a cat. Hellcat, mm -hmm. them motherfuckers just get stole too much, and them young niggas love them. That's too what much. I'm saying. Young niggas, if young niggas wasn't they gonna follow you, bro. So much, I yeah. wouldn't. You feel me? Yeah. I had a challenger. They will give you Hellcat about the Hellcat. They stole my challenger as soon as I got that bitch. Get out of here. Yeah, just a regular challenger. Regular challenger. Yeah. Dude, what even trick that? It wasn't. That bitch was stuck. It was washed with some Amarillo, and they stole that motherfucker. When they found it, was I'm thinking of getting me another one though. Mm. But they just so damn small. Mm. Maybe go with a charger or something. I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah. That's just so, it's just so niggerish, though. Mm. Too many, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I might go look at something tomorrow. I like, how that, um, how that, uh, what's that, what's that, that car that my cousin had sold you? It's Trans Am? I need, get, I need to get his info. That was a bad motherfucker, brother. I rock? Yeah. Yeah. I need to know who he had tuning that bitch. So it's, 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 it's a, you, you having good uh, a good time with it, man. That car fast as a motherfucker. Wow, for real. I'm gonna get you, when we get through. I'm gonna get your cousin info. Dig. I definitely want to see who he had tuning. It. Dig. Okay. You you didn't turn it out already, man. I done spent. I done did donuts all in that bitch. Okay. That car fast. Okay. That sound like a plan, man. Yeah, it was a small world, man. I was me and my brother be buying cars from all. Man, over you know the place. I ain't even know you had a brother. Man, my I cousin got a told gang me that of shit. Brother. Huh? Yeah, I got a gang of brothers. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, gang of brothers. I thought man. my cousin. I mean, my cousin. Yeah, my cousin. Bro, was I fuck thought the nigga was lying when he said he was your cousin. No, we first cousins. For real? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we first cousins. Yeah, same mom, same um, our mom, our moms and sisters. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Small world, Jack. People be bringing your ass up all the time. Get the fuck out of here. Bruh. You never tell me this. I never do, because y'all know how you get. How do I get? You, bruh, you be leaving unicorns under bitches' comments, Jack. You a weirdo. I, I got to be a weirdo because I respect the ladies. Jack. And want them to have a magical day. Jack, unicorns, man. Unicorn. Stop doing that, because they're going to think the last thing you want is some pussy. Unicorn is very bisexual, Jack. <laughs> you can't even dispute that. <laughs> hey, you hate them. I like girls. I like women. Act like it, bro. <laughs> What grown woman? You gonna judge a nigga off an of emoji, bro? What grown woman gonna fuck a nigga that's leaving horses in her comedy, Jack? Think about it. Just think about the this, bro. She out of all, she gonna skip over all these niggas who call her beautiful, ready to buy shit over the nigga who playing with unicorns and birthday cakes in her comedy. <laughs> hey, you be surprised. Right. Man, I'm, I'm turning into the last man standing with a lot of these bitches. You because lying, these, you Jack. Know? I seen you, you in action, dog. What you seen? Nigga, you. I what be, did you see? Jack, I be seeing you, what you, What you be seeing? Bro, when I see you do your thing, I don't even say shit. I just scroll past. For like, instance. Like Jack being a weirdo again. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Jack, you be leaving fucking birthday cakes and streamers and shit. It, ain't, it don't even be their birthday, man. <laughs> Stop doing this shit. You childish as fuck, Jack. I'm supportive. <laughs> no, you not. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is your birthday. Bro, you be scrolling through Instagram, you see a bad bitch, you look under the comments, you see Jack, and it just, his comment is, yes! And it just be a bunch of S's like, Jack, stop doing this shit! <laughs> Hell is 
wrong with you, man? Oh, shit. Nigga, you done seen my shit? Yes. Hell no. Stop it, man. <laughs> nigga, you done made you, you about to make me stop now. You should. What's wrong with you, bro? I'm just trying to be a positive. Out of everybody that's got them, you know, leaving eggplants and all that other shit, I was trying to just give them something different, you know? Bro, women don't even really like men who use a bunch of emojis. Bro, that shit is so feminine. Ask, I... in, ask any woman. Niggas don't supposed to be using all them goddamn emojis, man. I, like, you a grown man, Jack. You only get to use maybe three to five emojis. Ask a nigga. You get to use them little creepy ass eyes, and you get to send the one, the little smiley face with the hard eyes. And you know, if on some play shit, the one that's throwing up. That's it. You don't get a lot of emojis, Jack. Ask, look how that lady laughing right there. Ma'am, how many emojis can a nigga use in a conversation before you cut them off? I'm talking about saying like you texting the conversation and a nigga, every fucking sentence got three emojis in it. Jack, that shit is aggravating to look at. And plus, if somebody looking like over your shoulder, it's gonna look, you're gonna look like a predator because that looks very childish. I'm not here to judge you, Jack. I'm just letting you know as a friend and a neighbor, I got your best interest at heart. Won't nobody tell you because we love to see you do your thing, but I'm trying to increase your productivity. Just something to think about. I mean, is your way working? I'd like to think so. No, Jack, stop it, bro. I know you off camera. You a lonely man. You got two cats and you eat Frosted Flakes with no milk in it. <laughs> 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 I got two cats. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey. Yeah, on that note, man, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Man, we got to, man. Nothing yeah. else, ain't nothing else left. Man. Yeah, we we yeah, we did that today, man. Hey, like I always say, man, you just can't say you really something you gotta be, man. Make sure you 